Welcome back. Super excited. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to create your first project within Android Studio. So let's jump right in. Let's navigate first to the menu bar, click on File, then choose New, and there's an option called New Project. So once I select this option, it brings up a dialog box and will walk me through a series of steps. The first field that I need to specify is the name of the application that I'm about to develop. So let's say I'm going to say news app, the company domain, which is claydesk.com, and then the project location, the folder where all of the files are going to be stored on my account. You could, of course, change it by clicking on the three ellipses. This will bring up the Windows Explorer, and you can then specify the new folder or project location. Here's the package name. So currently, it's com.playdesk.newsapp. Of course, you can edit it and then change the name of the package. So we're going to leave it as it is right now, but you can, of course, give it any other name if you like. Maybe you're using a different domain. And then a couple of other options include C++ support. And the other option is include Kotlin support. So by default, the programming language is Java. But if you wish to include Kotlin support, you could within this particular news app or this new project that you're creating. So you can always, of course, come back to these settings and change it and reconfigure them later on. So I'm going to choose include Kotlin support because you may need to convert your Java code into Kotlin language at later point in time. So click Next. And then in this particular screen, you can then choose several options. You can select the form factors and minimum SDK. And some devices require additional SDK. So you need to be careful in selecting the type of SDK that you want to use or the APIs that you would like to use. For instance, the API 27 is Android 8.1, which is Oreo. I click on the drop down arrow. There are other options as well. The latest one at this point in time is Android Pi, which is Android 9. So you could choose to use this in order to utilize your app or create the news app with this API 28, Android 9 Pi. Now, also note that there are very few devices that actually are using Android 9. Majority of them are still Marshmallow and other APIs. So it's really up to you to decide which API you wish to use for app that you're about to create. So I'm going to choose, let's say, Android 8.1 Oreo or Android 8. doesn't matter. I could choose 9 as well. So it just kind of shows me right here that by targeting API 27 and later, your app will run on approximately 1.1% of devices only. So very few handful of devices actually use 8.1. If I choose another, let's say Android 6, which is API 23, now it shows me that 62.6% devices actually use API 23 and later. So again, it's really your choice. Since we're developing in the current mode, which is either Android 9 or 8, you could choose either one of them. You can also include Android Instant App Support. If not, we can always reconfigure it later. And the other four options, Wear OS, TV, Android Auto, and Android Things. If you check these boxes, the required dependencies or the SDKs for these type of development environment will also be installed, which means it's going to take up more space and more time. But for right now, I'm just going to Make sure that this checkbox for phone and tablet because my app is going to run primarily on the Android phone or tablet using API 27, which is Android 8.1 or you. If I click on Help Me Choose, by the way, before I move forward, so if I click on this option, it brings me a nice screen where it shows me exactly the API levels, the Android platform versions, and then the cumulative distribution. So now I have a visual picture as well. And then I can simply select and choose the correct version for this app. And this is, again, an important step because you would like to develop an app that runs on the majority of the platform. At this point, it seems like 
people are still using 4.1 Jelly Bean, right? API 16, which is being run on 99.6% of Android devices. So a helpful tip. Let's cancel. So once you've selected the phone and tablet option, just click on next. And this is where you would now add an activity to your project or newly created or about to be newly created news app. These are just templates. You can start with the blank activity. You can choose the basic activity, which will, which entails that will give you an icon, right? You can also start with the Google Map activities, full screen, fragment, view model, and so on. There are several options that you can pick and choose. So I'm going to stick with the empty activity, which is selected. Click Next. The next screen allows you to create a new name for your activity. So by default, it's main activity, which is fine. At the same time, it's going to generate the layout file, which is the XML file as well. So your main activity is going to be the name of the main activity or your first screen, right, on your phone. And then, of course, the associated XML file. And this backward compatibility, which is app compat, make sure it's checked as well. So click finish. And this will allow you to create a new project. And then you're starting off with your news app right from scratch. So the build is going to run, of course. And of course, you're going to see the process updates here on the status bar as well. So once the build is finished, you will have your new project successfully created. Perfect. Congratulations. So our Gradle project sync is still in progress, but pretty much finished. We have our files, which again, under the Android left navigation pane, I can see that the main activity file has been created. And then of course, it's still being processed. So once everything is finished, I should be able to navigate to my resource folder under layout. And then here's my activity main.xml. If I were to open this, of course, it's still going to say wait for build to finish because I'm just jumping the gun here. And that's pretty normal because uh, Android Studio is a little bit, it takes time, okay, once you're building. So again, depending on the type of the processor or the computer that you're using, it takes a few seconds, sometimes minutes even to build. And the larger the application is, of course, the more time it's going to take. So it looks like everything is successfully completed. So now I have the activity main.xml. I can zoom in and just see the sample app here for my new project. The default is news app. That's the name that I chose or that I selected. And then of course the hello world as the default. Under the Java folder, here's my main activity and this is my Java code. So once again practice creating new projects. Once you have the project, you can, of course, start to build on this. Right now, there's only one screen, which is the main activity right here. Okay. So from here on out, you can create additional screens or additional activities. We can add images. We can add text and so forth. So I hope this helps. Practice with this. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. I'll be glad to help. And with this, let's move to the next lesson.